Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I'm here with the fifth and final exploration and log of SCP-610. I know I've been uh, kind of making this longer than it had to be, and putting the, it into more videos than it really should have been. That is due to me running out of time every time I've been making one of these videos. Hopefully, I'll have enough time to do this video without any interruptions, as the exploration logs themselves on their own are pretty short, although altogether they can get very, very long. If you like the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you do not like the video, I don't know what to, do, what to tell you. Let's get into it. SCP-610 L5. Approval from Central HQ was granted for a manned assault excursion into the tunnels beneath Site A to track and to ascertain any ex the extent of the SCP-610 infection. The destruction of Site A and Site C have established SCP-610 can be contained and destroyed, making the source of the infection top priority. The initial descent into the tunnels consists of five teams. Two research and three assault, along with enough equipment to establish an underground base of operations. Descent into the tunnels was established using pulley systems and a lift to move equipment. Assault teams were the first to descend, armed with, frame, with flame units to clean SCP 610 out of the area. All teams were able to descend without incident, and flame units took point in providing an undisturbed journey toward the waters or it's where the the Verbal Silskin's drone was lost, as I remember er, er, naming it. Base camp for underground SCP-610 and operations resides at the bottom of a three-way junction. Four of the water flows included. The first pathway is what is that at which led from Site A, A to Cavern HQ. The second is pathway to the ruined village residing in the mountain, and it's above where S where Verbal Silskin was destroyed by a large unknown SCP-610 entity. The third pathway heads west and seems to follow the flow of water for an unknown distance. The cavern area here is quite large and is supported by a number of rock formations that are coated with decayed SCP-610 material. The state of this material suggests great age and appears to reinforce the structural supports. Whether this is intentional or coincidental is unknown. The two research teams split and activities between a building cavern HQ and collecting samples of SCP-610 in its various states. No contagious materials were detec detected within th this area, and the creature recorded by unmanned drones did not appear at any point to the cavern staff. Of the four research teams, three were ordered to proceed down the unexplored pathway while an aerial drone was prepped for a second and recon of the vertical shaft. The 610 infection did not appear in the third pathway until approximately 3 kilometers, and the infection did not appear until oh, 16 kilometers in. Even after the lengths traveled by the assault teams, no SP-610 infection, infectious life forms were encountered, and the fleshy material coating cavern walls posed no threat to them. The most significant reports at this time were the increasing thickness of material suggesting its source, and the complete lack of SCP-610 contamination in the water. As a test, a sample of SCP-610 was cut away from the cavern wall and placed in the flow of water. It exhibited no unusual reactions, but was quickly swept away by the current. <sighs> At 20 kilometers in, the leader of the assault team has requested a transport buggy to be dispatched to them. One was available at the above-ground HQ, however, it would take time to move it to cavern HQ and then remote drive it to the teams. Rations provided to the assault teams were sufficient, so a camp was established while the buggy was moved and ready. During this time, an aerial drone was, was also sent to explore the vertical shaft. The results of this exploration were placed on hold with the arrival of the buggy at Cavern HQ, and ultimately concluded in documents that it expunged. The buggy was navigated to the assault team in encampment with no events on route. However, upon arrival and operation to continue the exploration, the assault team came under a are attacked by a number of large SCP-610 and infected lifeforms that emerged from the area ahead of them. Video recovered from the assault team and cameras showed them caught off guard as the SCP-610 infected made no sound and were undetectable. On one film, for one to seconds appeared that some of the creatures are coming out of the SCP-610 materials on the wall. 
that are emerging from them so much as being created by the material and then breaking away to act independently. <sighs> During this assault and an attempt to protect Buggy, an unknown un amount of embers were lost to the water currents, and contact with them was lost. Contact was regained, however, and is re recorded in SCP 610L6. The remainder of the assault team now consists of three members, armed with a single flame unit. This was unit to repel the assault proved vital as iron firearms and minimal damage to infected creatures. These infected creatures throw minimal traits to associate them with any known form of life in the region, giving rise to the belief that they may have spawned and spawned by the SP610 infection itself as a form of defense. No further casualties were suffered during the raid, and the remaining members managed to eliminate all attacking infected, allowing them to continue with the exploration without or its attempt to locate the lost team members. A further 20 kilometers into the tunnel, the river separated from the tunnel pathway, and the team was instructed to abandon the recovery order, given the inability to navigate the water safely. An unknown amount of time passed before the remaining assault team reached an end in the, in the tunnel. At the perimeter of the area now known as Site B, the team came under assault again from a smaller number of SCP-610 that were much larger in size. These specter individuals appeared in the tunnel as if they were living, lying in wait for the approaching team. These creatures were dispatched using the flame M unit, although all fuel for the unit was expended in this act. The assault teams were was now limited to standard weapons and short-range personal flame units. A time lapse of 5 minutes is, is allowed to pass before the team proceeds further into Site B. Cautious of further assault by SCP-610 infected, the tunnel widens out into what appears to have once been a village of indeterminate age. The construction of the buildings in the area are primitive compared to settlements in Site A and Site C. And are of clearly human construction. Many buildings rest at angles or slants, suggesting they were disturbed by a cave-in. Of interest is a building that appears to be a church with a working clock tower. This building is built atop the remains of two older buildings that have fallen completely and has a visibly stable foundation. Surrounding all structures in this area is a fresh in the ground filled with a substance resembling a liquefied form of SCP-610 fleshy materials. The pool moves as if acted upon by minute and unseen forces, rippling outward from invisible contact forces and rolling in waves from end felt winds. The team avoids this pool at all times and proceeds its sort of ruins, slowly on stable foundations where possible, making the church their target area. Within the church are pews, as will be expected, however, there are only four of them. And one of them shattered when the building could accommodate as many as 20. The three intact pews. It was arranged in, in a 2-1 formation facing a pulpit. There is no trace of dust on any surface, the entire area appearing to be immaculately clean. Given the location and believed age, the end pulpit is a hole in the floor exposing an area of SCP-610 pool beneath the building. The church and ruins appear to be uninhabited. An exploration of the church which proper is uneventful until the clock tower, until the clock tower or bell tolls. This tolling triggers a shudder in the building, followed by human screams from the ceiling. Light shone upon on the ceiling reveals a large mass of SCP-610 from which descend a series of six, six wooden circles. Draft to each circle is living human and code entirely from neck to toe in SCP-610. But having exposed head, which appears uninfected, these human captives scream as the bell continues to toll, and the circle almost move over to the ground. The team begins to move toward one and to investigate when an unknown creature cries from outside from the building, prompting them to take cover in the shadows near the pulpit. Light sources are extinguished, pitching the entire team into darkness. Night vision is left off to avoid revealing the team's location. Sounds continue to emit from the outside of the church, drawing closer but lower than the frantic screams of the captive humans. At least one knows the team, as captive human is often called out to be saved. From the entrance to the church, a candle holds lights on the side of the doorway, then one on the other side. A figure is seen holding a small torch and moving back and forth between a series of candles to light the doorway. 
The flame is then applied to a rub called an SV610, which quickly ignites and spreads to a peculiar accelerator system at the church entrance. A light from the system illuminates most of the crosses, but does not reach the team's hiding place. Those captives who appear in the light do not show standard sites of the beige colored SCP 610 infection, but instead are wrapped in a red variant of it, which shows signs of constant motion rippling across itself in waves. From outside the church, a flood of SCP 610 infected shambled quickly into the area, ignoring the man who Ignoring the man who lit the candles and stands in the middle of the room. They proceed to the captives on the world in circles and begin to pull at the red SCP-610 message, resulting in further screams and cries. From what can be gathered from the returned video feed, the red SCP-610 seems to be connected to the captives and is using them as a source of sustenance that then uses to grow and feed the normal SCP-610 infected. Overly zealous, infected tear at the red mass too hard, which results in pulling skin and tissue from the human captive beneath. This exposed area is quickly covered by the red mass, which then grows in size. Feeling like this continues for approximately six minutes, at which time the candle bearing figure sounds a gong and all infected entities move to the pews. There are several more creatures that, and seats, but none and move past the frontmost pews. The figure who sounds the gong is up moves, spontaneously collapsing as if made from hollow clay. From the pulpit area, activity is known as a or of SCP-610 flesh rises through the hole and extends, directing itself towards the other creatures. No sound is heard, and no motion is recorded once the pillar stops moving. The silent period persists for 10 minutes without even the human captives making a noise, and falling silent at an unknown point. The pillar of SCP-610 attracts the the hole emerged from without any more earning, prompting the departure of the infected from the building. The candle also remains lit, and the team emerges after all infected appear to leave the area. The descending captives remain at ground level as well, all screaming to have, have ceased, but still showing signs of life with heavy breathing and movement. Upon departure from the church, camera feeds from all three members become erratic. Camera 1 ceases transmitting completely, camera 2 screws straight up into the air for several meters, and camera 3 captures the member with camera 2 being flung and by a tantrum that emerges out of the ground itself, swinging them outside and not to the other side of the room. So camera 3, when camera 1's feet is restored, Orion and displays camera 3 is on a running and grifting in the direction of the lost team member owns to turn and run back as SCP-610 infected part from between buildings. Combat ensues between two members and the onrushing infected using assault rifles and personal flame units, successfully driving back enough of the horde to make an escape if torn the buggy. Passing by a building, camera 1's owner is ambushed by a figure resembling the figure who is in a church lighting candles, building a large crop site. Camera 3's owner continues to use without pause for the buggy location, however the buggy is found half absorbed by the SCP-610 mask covering the floor. While trying to find another way to escape, Camera 3's owner returns to find the same figure with the site approaching. Weapon raised, two shots are fired, and the camera feed ends. Five hours later, while decisions were underway to decide how to contain or eradicate the SCP-610 threat, time delayed video feed from the last team members who fell into the underground river currents were established and has been filed and SCP-610-L6. However, there is no SCP-610-L6, as far as I can find. We can try. It does not exist. Hmm. <sighs> So that was SCP-610, the final all, um, exploration and log. If you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you did not like the video, then you just wasted about 14 to 15 minutes of your time. That's a quarter of an hour that you could have, uh, have done to doing something that you liked. <sighs> I'll see you in the next video, oh, oh, where I might be doing something completely different because uh, I don't know what I want to do tomorrow. Who knows? I'll find out. Either way, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.